flat earthers use the 8 inch per mile squared equation all the time to prove that objects at a distance should be partially or totally invisible in a globe earth model. Because they don't see that happening, in contrast to most other people, they consider that as proof for the flat earth. The 8 inch per mile squared is a formula used to find the drop of the earth due to its curvature. So at first we have to define what we mean by drop. By the way, most flat earthers use the term curvature and drop as if these were interchangeable, which leads to the most hilarious blunders. Most FEers define the drop as the vertical distance between the point A on a tangent to a globe or a circle and the point B on that globe or that circle lying vertical beneath the point on the tangent. A better definition, more according to a spherical earth model, would be the distance from point A to point B stroke on the surface of the globe or the circle in the direction of the center point. This seems to be an entirely different definition, with entirely different results, but the outcome of both definitions is only a bit different at distances between 100 kilometers, that's about 63 miles. Now let's first start with some basic mathematics. Any form can be expressed in a mathematical equation. You set out one value in the horizontal direction and the other val value in the vertical direction and connecting the dots results in a graphical representation of the equation. A circle also can be expressed as a mathematical equation. This equation is shown on top. This gives a vertical drop according to the second formula from top. The equation 8 inch per mile squared, I prefer the equation 7.8 centimeters per kilometers squared, because I live in metric land, if plotted out in a diagram results in this form, better known as a parabola. The formal equation is depicted on top. This gives a vertical drop according to the second formula from the top. It is clear that the parabola doesn't match the circle. The discrepancies increase the greater the distance becomes. However, for the first 100 kilometers, these discrepancies can be ignored. The difference between the circle calculation and the parabola calculation at 100 kilometers is about 3 meters, that's 100 feet. Above the 100 kilometers line, the differences start to grow rapidly. At 200 kilometers, 125 miles, it is 16 meters, that's 530 feet. At 300 kilometers, that's 187 miles, the distance, the difference has grown to 39 meters, that's 1300 feet. The 8 inches per mile squared, or the 7.8 centimeters per kilometer squared, is not an exact representation of the drop, but provided that it isn't used for distances greater than 100 kilometers or about 63 miles, it gives an acceptable outcome. But it isn't suited to determine what part of a building or mountain will be obscured due to the curvature of the earth, because that is something completely different. Some more mathematics in order to, in order to understand fully what's coming. Imagine a cross section of the earth with standing on top an observer and at some distance an high rise building. The heights are exaggerated because at the scale of the earth you wouldn't see any of it. The drop of the earth expressed in the formula 7.8 cm per kilometer squared is depicted by the purple line. The drop is much more than the height of the high rise. Most flat earthers conclude the high rise isn't visible for the observer. This conclusion is drawn most of the time independent of the height of the observer. However, this height is a determinative factor, because the line of sight follows a completely different trajectory. If you take that line of sight into account, the top of the high rise would very well be visible. Note that the point where the green line of sight just touches the red line of the circle, the spherical earth, determines what is known as the horizon. 
Now let's see how some flat earthers misused mathematics on a colossal scale. Let's look at this video fragment of Mr. Thrive and Survive, where he looks at the picture of Mount Rainier taken from Mount Brunswick. I edited it because Mr. Thrive and Survive loves his own voice more than I do. I'll stop the video here and there to add my comment. This is like a Darwinist finding the missing link. It really is. That's how good I see uh, this picture right here. He claims to have made a discovery that matches the finding of the missing link. That's a dangerous thing to say for someone who is about to make the most stupid mistakes. Now the camera source is uh, from Mount Brunswick, which has an elevation of 5,866 feet. We are assuming that the camera person was standing at the very top of the mount, and this is to our disadvantage. So what, what we're going to be the most disadvantaged here, you're going to see it. it doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, it does matter, and it proves to matter to him, because he isn't going to use the position of the observer at all. Uh, mount Rainier was what we saw in the background, back right portion of the screen. Uh, of the photograph and the elevation there is 14,416 feet. He uses the distance to the horizon calculator which is good because it takes into account the height of the observer. His conclusion is that the hor horizon lies at 93 miles. That's not entirely correct but I it will do. What this means is when you get 93.8 miles from the source uh, the curvature of the earth will no longer allow you to see anything beyond that unless something sticks up and that's a you know uh, of course if you have good visibility and different things like that of course when you're high up visibility is less of a factor uh, because in this case we're above clouds and we also uh, the the you know when you, you get up that high just that the air is thinner you have you know there's no smog uh, no different things like that to uh, um, obscure your your view now he states that he cannot see beyond this horizon unless something is sticking out above it and then he starts mumbling to hide that he's in trouble here. So he's starting to do the usual mumbo jumbo about visibility, thinner air, smog and other things that haven't anything to do with the horizon he just calculated. This is all to obscure the fact that you can see things beyond the horizon but it suits him better to leave that in clouds. Now, uh what I have listed here is this DTH equals 93.8 miles. That's from that calculator we just looked at. Distance to the horizon from the peak of Mount Brunswick. Uh, the curvature, now this will look more like you're used to seeing uh, the global people draw it here in a minute. Uh, we're going to draw it like it is a globe and take a look at that. Uh, so don't worry about that, we'll get there. Uh, See the calculation on top? Here he uses the 8 inches per mile squared to calculate the drop from the horizon to Mount Rainier. That drop is 6,666 feet, which is the outcome of the formula at a distance of 100 miles. Apart from the mentioning of 666 coincidence, proof of his religious bias, his number will be important later on. And we'll have to talk about this later, the mathematics may actually be wrong. It may actually be higher than 8 inches. They've been lying to us about that, I believe. Story for another time. In any case, um, that will give you uh, the amount of inches uh, in drop. Then what you do is, if, you want to, if it's a lot large number, you can divide that by 12, and that will give you how many feet. That's what I did here, and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Um, when we, uh, that's right here, 7,950 feet uh, would be the uh, drop. He subtracts 6,666 from the height of Mount Rainier, that's 15,416 feet, and gets 7,950 feet. In the way of thinking of the average f ear, that would lead to the conclusion that that you could only see the top 7,950 feet of the mountain, which is wrong, and leave it at that. But that's not the outcome Mr. Thrive and Survive wants. He is set to prove that you couldn't be able to see Mount Rainier at all, and comes with this. Now, 
Obviously, that means that uh, if we draw this out, of course, this is not geometrically correct, uh, but uh, the curvature at that is 25,039 feet um, at 193.8 miles. So obviously, uh, Mount Rainier would be below what this person could see, even if the distance to, to the horizon would allow them to see this far, which it doesn't. That's actually elimination number one, 193.8 miles. The fact that Mount Rainier is below what could be seen anyway on the globe, even if the, uh, the distance wasn't limited as far as to the horizon, um, Mount Rainier is below. So th these are actually labeled wrong. The, there's two eliminations right here already. He shows this hilarious picture of the curvature of the Earth blocking the site and now suddenly he shows the curvature over 193 miles being 25,039 feet which is the correct outcome of the formula at a distance of 193.8 miles. He doesn't realize that the drop from the horizon to Br Mount Brunswick 5,866 feet and the drop of the horizon to Mount Rainier, the infamous 6,666 feet, added up amount to 12,532 feet, about half the calculated drop of 25,039 feet over 193.8 miles. Or does he? I think he does, because the next slide looks like this. All right. Now, when you put in where the, I'm going to, this is actually a little bit overextended to uh, make the point, uh, but the drop from Y to Z, here's Y, top of Mount, Mount uh, Brunswick, Z is the distance to the horizon. The drop is 5,865 feet in that distance alone. Then you have points Z and B. B is where Mount Rainier is. The distance uh, drop calculation here is from Z to B, from this point right here, where this person stops seeing because the horizon of the Earth gets in the way, or the curvature of the Earth gets in the way, rather. Uh, there's an additional 19,174 foot drop that this person can't even see because it's beyond what the Earth will allow them to see from their elevation. So the total drop when you add these two is 25,039 feet. The drop from the horizon to Mount Rainier now of a sudden has become 19,174 feet instead of the calculated 6,666 feet. He is laying the foundations for his next disappearance trick. He hides his maneuver by talking some incomprehensible drivel, adding and subtracting random numbers and then he conjures the rabbit out of his top head drop over the distance from Mount Brunswick to Mount Rainier being 25,039 feet is larger than the height of Mount Rainier at 14,416 feet even the drop from the horizon to Mount Rainier at 19,174 feet is more so in no way Mount Rainier could be seen from the top of Mount Brunswick why does he take the detour of adding up the drop to the horizon and the drop from the horizon to Mount Rainier using the false numbers? It is so he can keep showing this picture, suggesting that he takes the line of sight into account, which he ob obviously doesn't. Actually, although he says something else, he shows in his picture almost the right answer. Because, using the right mathematics, 5,369 feet of Mount Rainier would be obscured due to the curvature of the Earth. In his scheme, he mentions 5,865 feet, which is another mistake he makes. He doesn't even realize that he mentioned earlier the all-time favorite number of flat earthers of 6,666 feet, so he seems not to understand himself what he is doing and is also selectively shopping around in a random set of numbers. You just witnessed one of the most embarrassing pieces of mathematics that I have ever seen, apart from the ones I'll be showing you in the next video. Among the things among the things I mentioned, he also confuses the horizon as the line where heaven and earth meet, with the horizon used in pers perspective. 
by, by stating that flat earthers can see a mountain at nearly 200 miles, he totally dismisses the perspective argument that FEers use, where you can only look as far as the horizon due to perspective. He also proves that the horizon is at eye level, something some FEers are rather obstinate about. In the picture he is showing there is no horizon to be seen, only clouds, or fog as some have claimed it to be. This is a textbook example of mixing up definitions, making up things as he goes along, applying rules to one case but ignoring those rules in another, and a complete lack of even the most basic understanding of how a, a three-dimensional model would work. It could also be a textbook example of the way a snake oil salesman would handle the truth. And then he demonstrates that he actually is a snake oil ped peddler. He ends his video with this ad. Only snake oil is called colonial silver these days. Now this was an example of someone who either believes his own stupid mathematics or knows better but chooses not to let that show in order to sell his atomizer spray bottles of colonial silver. It is not very important to mention but he has 27,500 subscribers. Dreadful, isn't it?